Welcome to The Morgan Show. I'm Sierra Burnett, along with... Tay Gardner. In this past weekend, our Morgan State football team had a dominating win over the University of Virginia at Lynchburg. Carson Baker, Offensive Player of the Week, threw three touchdown passes in the first half, and Alfonso Graham ran for over 70 yards and a touchdown. As Morgan overwhelmed Virginia Lynchburg 44-10 on Saturday before an announced crowd of 2,576 people at Hughes Stadium, and now to Sierra Burnett with some of the offensive members of the football team. With a new head coach and a new offensive scheme, the Morgan State football team has found success on the ground early this season. Morgan's running game has been effective because of the tandem running efforts of Alfonso Graham and Jabril Johnson. Plus, the offensive line has opened up running lanes as wide as the ocean. We caught up with a few of the guys in the trenches this week. After Morgan's 0-2 start, the offense began to find its rhythm and what game plan works best. The running game has carried them to back-to-back -back wins against Sacred Heart and Virginia University of Lynchburg. Running backs Alfonso Graham and Jabril Johnson have combined for a total of 465 yards through the first four games this season. The duo has lined up together in the backfield and gone to work. Graham, a senior from Baltimore, has played in four games and gained 339 yards and scored three touchdowns on 52 carries. He rushed for over 100 yards against Georgia Southern in the team's season opener. Uh, one two punch. So if I'm in, I can wear him out uh, with the speed. He got the power to come with it. So it's just a great one two combination. Johnson, a junior from Baltimore, has gained 126 yards and scored a touchdown in Morgan's win over Sacred Heart. He says he adds the two in the one two punch in the backfield. It's hard to stop both of us at the same time. So it's just keep going back and forth and forth. We're just going to keep gashing them. It's hard to game plan against both of us when we both have two different uh, running styles. As easy as it may look for Graham and Johnson, they have received help from the offensive linemen up front who create the path for them to break through a potentially score touchdown. The unit helped quarterback Carson Baker earn MEAC player of the week and has clearly made an impact for the guys in the backfield. Honestly, for offensive line, it's just about our guys scoring. Like when I see, you know, our running back Zoe Brill or some of the receivers, they score the touchdown. That's when we know, like, you know, that's that's the work that we did for real. So, first year head coach Damon Wilson and offensive coordinator BT Sherman have implemented a new offensive running scheme this season. With the push from the front line, it has placed Graham and Johnson in position to churn out yards. The Bears hope to continue their success this weekend against Norfolk in an important homecoming game. And this is Sierra Burnett, reporting live for The Morgan Show. And now we're going to throw it to Lake for five takeaways on last week's football game. I'm back with this week's five takeaways after the victory over Lynchburg. Number one, the Bears stay hot after the bye week. The Bears are coming off a bye week after their last win against the Sacred Heart Pioneers two weeks ago. In the game against the Dragons, the Bears went to work early in the first half, outscoring the Dragons 37-7 before halftime. For the rest of the game, the defense held the Dragons to just three points and the offense scored one more touchdown. Two, Carson Baker has a great day. Bears quarterback Carson Baker caught fire in the first half of the game against the Dragons. Baker completed 10 of his 14 passes, had 160 yards, and had three touchdowns and zero interceptions in the first half. Baker's longest pass was a 49-yard touchdown pass to wide receiver Avery Jones in the final seconds of the first quarter. Baker was taken out of the game after the first half of the game. I trust Coach Sherman. I trust my coaches, said Baker. Number three, Lawrence Richardson and defense shut down the Dragons. Linebacker Lawrence Richardson showed his presence on the field for the Bears. He had seven solo tackles, the most tackles for the Bears' defense on Saturday. The rest of the defense held the Dragons to 10 total points and had five sacks on the quarterback. The defense took advantage of field position as well when the Dragons started on their own three-yard line that resulted in the safety. Number four, running game still looks sharp. The running game for the Bears is still looking solid. Running back Alfonso Graham had a big run for 55 yards in the game. He would finish the game with 70 yards off eight carries. The team would outrush the Dragons 115-63. Despite a few lost yards running the ball and a better passing day for the Bears, running the football should still be their strong point in their offense moving forward. Finally, number five, too many penalties. 
Even though the Bears won in a blowout game, it did not stop them from getting penalties. The Bears had 17 penalties called that resulted in 224 yards total compared to the Dragons' seven penalties called for 63 total yards. The Bears need to avoid getting that many penalties in future games against their opponents. Getting penalties like that may result in points for the opposing team. For the offense, it'll make it challenging to get first downs or touchdowns, and for the defense, it will make them stay out on the field longer and make them tire faster. Time of possession of the football is key to most in most games, especially in ones that are closer. I'll be back with five takeaways of the homecoming game next week. MSU Bear Nation, enjoy your homecoming. Go Bears! Morgan State's women cross-country team competed at the Maryland Eastern Shore Farm Run this past Saturday and placed third with a total of 75 points and a combined time of 1 hour, 45 minutes, and 42 seconds. Morgan will continue its season this week on Friday, October 7th at the Delaware State Farm Course in Dover, Delaware, hosted by Delaware State University at 3 p.m. Earlier this week, I got the opportunity to get a little more insight on Morgan's cross-country team and how they prepare for their long-distance runs, as well as speak with Coach Hodge and Rachel Field on her success so far this season. Senior Rachel Field just won her fifth runner of the week honor of her collegiate career. Through the first three weeks of the season, she's shown no signs of slowing down. A native of Santan Valley, Arizona, Field paced the Lady Bears in the MEAC field at the Delaware State Sting Invitational, completing the 5K course in a personal best time of 19 minutes and 19 seconds to finish 7th on the individual leaderboard. It was the second consecutive week that Field set a personal best time. Her time is the fourth fastest in the conference at that distance so far this season. Even though she just recorded a personal best time, Coach Hodge and herself have higher expectations for her. Because she bought into the process in terms of not too many mileage, but quality mileage. And I think she's doing exceptionally well thus far. She's PR at every meet we have been to so far, so I think she's on the right track to do some great things at conference. Being a Hall of Famer and having the experience that Coach Hodge has, the preparation for every race is set to pay off. Rachel has been a great example of that with her drive and focus while on the course. Um, so right now I'm in the top four and I'd like to finish first. Ideally, you know, of course, if you're competing, that's always the goal. Um, but the biggest thing is I'd like to get under 1840 in the 5K for this cross-country season. That's my biggest goal. Running for 19 or 20 minutes is never easy. When you have been running cross-country as long as Rachel Field has and creating a daily routine, everything may come a little easier. I think just preparing, like, practice is what gets you ready, so it isn't even necessarily like the day of that you prepare but it's I imagine running each race the week before so you know you know what you're going to go on running so I just imagine myself running that race and what I'd like to do as far as executing the plan. The season has only been underway for a few weeks now and Rachel Field plans to continue leading the cross country team to a MEAC title and one of her own. Leading with the news our men and women's basketball teams began practice last week and they will both start their season on November 7th. Last Friday, the Lady Bears volleyball team fell to 2-15 and 1-2 and and in the MEAC while playing against Coppin State University, who improved to 12-7 and 3-0 and and in the MEAC. The, the win was the third straight for the Eagles, who also captured their fifth straight victory over the Lady Bears. The Lady Bears, who got eight kills from Madison Grace and Michaela Billingsley, added six. Mackenzie Jefferson tallied eight assists, and Alyssa Sampson had the Lady Bears with 11 digs. We will see if the Lady Bears can defeat the MEAC defending champions, Howard University, this Friday in Washington, D.C. Morgan State head coach for bowling has announced the Lady Bears 2022-2023 to bowling schedule. The regular season schedule will feature seven tournaments, including the annual James Brown Invitational, hosted by Morgan State, two MEAC events involving all nine league members, along with a home dual match. The entire team returns for the 2022-2023 to campaign, and the level of competition this season will intensify by including a couple of premier events. Coming up next, we have a sit-down with Coach Falbo and senior player Natalia Vega about their upcoming season. In the Division One by NTCA in April of this year, correct? What attributes do you think contributed to this, and how do you plan to continue in this path? That honor even though an individual honor, anything that we earn like that, it, it's a team honor. 
Um, I have a great group of ladies, a great group of uh, leaders amongst themselves. Uh, we have um, established very quickly, just beginning last year, um, a new culture here at Morgan, and we're still trying to grow that. And growing it with these ladies has been um, great to see, great to experience for myself, and it's been a learning process for all of us, including myself would be mainly my resilience, my experience and my commitment uh, is what holds me to like keep pushing every day. I come from a background where sports is always been part of my life so that it helps me build like my character and I wouldn't be the person that I am without sports. So I've been bowling since I'm two years uh, old and like since then the learning and growth journey haven't stopped. So I think that that's uh, also helped me acknowledge like all the process that I've come from and like keep grinding every time to get uh, to reach the best version of myself. What I've seen is is a group of young ladies that have come back and have all worked. You can tell as a coach and when you speak to different coaches uh, who worked and who didn't. I know all of them worked. So right there was a great foundation. But now that I'm seeing their dedication, determination, and the execution out there, um, it's all coming together really, really well. The expectations are high, but realistic in terms of we're going to, at least for me, I'm living in that moment. I want us to maximize what we're doing at any given time. Having a chance to win a tournament may come as a nice surprise to us. It may have come to as a nice surprise to us last year, but now no more. You know, the expectation is, is to go there to at least be in contention to win at every tournament. Welcome to the Where Are They Now segment. My name is Candace Beezer, and I'm here with Mr. Guy Goodwin, Morgan Track and Field Hall of Famer, came to Morgan in 1980 and set 11 records for relay as well as five-time Penn Rally watch winner. Thank you, Mr. Goodwin, for coming on the show today. We really appreciate it. Um, Thank you for having me. No problem, no problem. My first question for you will be, what is one of your biggest takeaways of your time here at Morgan? Well, um, my time here at Morgan um, was was very, very important to me. You know, my mama and my daddy didn't have to pay for me to go to school. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when they are free, um, we, we did great as far as um, athletics and academics. And um, I give all that to God. I really do. Okay, okay. And how do you think being here with everything you said, like, shaped your life? Like, how did Morgan shape you as a person? Well, I didn't go away from school because I, you know, I live right up, right up the street, you know. Mm -hmm. But, um... You know, I saw the way a lot of, you know, students grew up here at Morgan and everything. And, you know, I seen the, I seen the hunger and I seen the struggle and I seen the successes as well. And um, I just thought that just made me a stronger person just as far as what I needed to do as far as make myself a better person as far as in life. Mm -hmm. And I know you primarily did check and field here at Morgan, but I also know that you went to the NFL and spent some time in the NFL. So what was that like? Well, it, well that, that was brief, but um, that was a great experience um, being on that level. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, a lot of people do not get, you know, to that level. And um, I thought that was a privilege. I thought that was was great for me. Um, and I just took that. Matter of fact, that was the first time I actually got told no, <laughs> you know, because when you're on that type of level, everybody is good. And eventually, you know, the roster only holds 53 people, and they're going to send somebody on. But I took that energy, and I developed that into a uh, business. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the, like, the hardships you face while being a student athlete here at Morgan and balancing being a student? Hardships? Uh, regularly. Um, I would say competition, <laughs> because when you, when you get to college and you get on that pro level, everybody's good. So you have to train real hard. Uh, you know, you have to come to practice. You know, you have to stay in the books. And um, that gets to be a challenge, you know, over and over and over again. A lot of people can't do that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I, I think that was my biggest challenge, my biggest hardship. Mm -hmm. And what do you think makes a strong player or, and a strong team dynamic, both of those two, a strong player and a strong team dynamic? 
I think you have to um, you have to do what's asked of you. You know, um, you know, a lot of individuals do not want to do that. Um, a lot of individuals do not want to do what the coach say does. You know, do what the coach say does, and, and you do and so that sort of thing. Um, and I think you got to step up. You got to be ready. You got to practice hard. Uh, and um, if you if you practice hard, you train hard. I mean, you shouldn't have to worry about what you got to do. Mm -hmm. And this is the Where Are They Now segment, so I would like to know, where are you now in your current career? Um, right now, um, I, work with, um, I work with young individuals who have had trauma in their life, okay? Um, a youth that haven't had the, you know, they, they weren't fortunate, aren't fortunate enough to grow up in a society like maybe you and I mm -hmm. and so forth. And um, what I have to do is counsel them, you know, I have to direct them. And I have to make sure that I give them the type of uh, energy and knowledge that's going to set them up to be a better person in life. Mm -hmm. And my last question for you would be, what advice do you have to the current track team here at Morgan? Say it again. What advice do you have for the current track team here at Morgan? Um, I would say go to class. <laughs> Definitely. Um, make sure that you, you try to help somebody when you can. Mm -hmm. And make sure that you graduate. <laughs> That's the end goal. That's the end goal. Well, you know? Thank you so much for being on the show, Mr. Goodwin. Once again, my name is Candace Beezer. This is Mr. Guy Goodwin. And this is the Where Are They Now segment. Before we head out, I just want to give a big shout out to Carson Baker for winning Offensive Player of the Week. And we here at The Morgan Show, thank you for watching. We hope to see you at this week's homecoming game against Norfolk. Where I expect our team to run them out of the stadium. I'm Sierra Burnett. And I'm Tay Gardner. Shh. <laughs>